No, am I on? Hi, this is Damon DeMarco for createx3.com. So people are always asking me, I'm thinking of buying my first vintage manual typewriter, or I've already bought my first vintage manual typewriter. What about the ribbons? Like, what about them? Where do you get all the ribbons from? And does one ribbon fit all machines? The answer might surprise you. Surprise me. I mean, I'm, I've been collecting them for a while and I, I'm still surprised. Maybe the most surprising thing is that the ribbon, you don't even have to worry about the ribbon. The spools are what you have to worry about. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. That's why I've put together a, a primer, primer on, on typewriter, typewriter ribbons, ribbons and, and spools. spools. What the hell was that? Take, take, take a look at these three machines that I'm showing you right here. They look pretty different, don't they? And they are. Three machines made by three separate manufacturers on two different continents over 20 years. Surely they can't have the same ribbons, but they do. Now, take a look at these three machines right here. Well, these all look like portable typewriters, right? Surely they take the same ribbons. All six of them take the same ribbons, but they don't take the same spools. It's the spool that's the key, not the ribbon. Are you confused yet? Don't be. We're going to clear all this up right after this. Hey, I just thought of something. Hey, welcome back. Take a look at some more machines right over here. These machines, and every machine you just saw before, they all take the same ribbon. It's a standard half-inch width. Doesn't matter if it's straight black ink, or two-tone red and black, or incorrect paper white. It's the same size ribbon. The DIN2103, 13 millimeters wide, 12.7 millimeters wide. It's basically half an inch wide and about 10 meters long. The DIN stands for Deutsch Institut für Normung. I don't speak German. That's the best you're going to get out of me for that one. Basically, it means the German Institute for Standardization. It's been around since 1917, and they set standards for all sorts of industrial equipment around the world. Time was typewriter ribbons were made out of cotton. This went on until the early 50s, after which nylon was used as a cheaper replacement, and one that was supposed to last a lot longer, particularly under the heavy hammer falls of uh, electric typewriters, which were much harder on the ribbons. The cloth ribbons were said to hold ink a lot better, but what can you do? So again, ribbons are not the problem. You can get ribbons anywhere. It's the spools that are the problem. Even though all ribbons are pretty much the same length and width, the spools vary drastically from machine to machine. Okay, go back to this shot right here. All these machines take the same spool. You pop one out of any machine here, it should go right into another machine. That's why they call it a universal spool. Otherwise known as a DIN32755 spool, sometimes called the Group 1 spool. You can buy these spools anywhere. Amazon has them. eBay has them. Office supply stores have them. Anywhere. Many machines make use of proprietary spools, which are bespoke to their machine alone, like smaller ultra-portable machines, the Hermes Baby or the Hermes Rocket, or this Smith Corona Skyrider, which uh, was manufactured in 1950. 
It's the same half-inch ribbon, but check out how tiny the spools are. They won't fit pretty much any other machine but an ultra-portable. Remington and Remington Rand machines also take a smaller sprocket, even though technically they're a pretty large size portable. Not all of them, just some. That makes things easy, right? And then we come to the Olivetti's. I love Olivetti machines, but they can be a royal pain in the ass with their bespoke spools. Olivetti's use an entirely different spool size, which is known as the Group 4 spool. So, Call up any reputable typewriter dealer or vendor and ask them what type of spool your typewriter takes. They'll tell you. I've listed a few people that I know can and will help you in the comments down below here. So you can just call them up and say, hey, I've got this year machine. It's this make and model. Do you happen to know what type of spool it takes? How do you change a ribbon? First, figure out what spool size your machine takes. If it's a universal spool, no problem. Slip the old spools out, put the new one in, and you're good to go. No problem. This is my 1952 Olivetti Lettera 22. It has been running a bit low on ink for a while, and I think it's time to give it a new ribbon. I decided to give this one a two-tone ribbon, black and red, and I have those in stock. But the ribbon that I have comes on a universal spool, and the Olivetti takes a proprietary spool. Now what do I do? Just take the ribbon off the universal set of spools and load it onto the Olivetti's. So this is how we swap out a ribbon on universal spools and transplant it onto the Olivetti spools. First, we're going to want to take a note of how the ribbon winds. It seems to go around these posts here on either side, around the outside of the posts, then through these guides this way. You can see that there is a lower and an upper post, and it threads directly through them. Not this way, but through them. And that is also repeated on that side right there. Finally, as it goes through the paper guide, you can see that it's pretty standard. It just goes right through these paper guide rungs right here. With that identified, I feel comfortable that if I take this thing off, change the ribbon out, I can put it back on and everything's going to be fine. I say that laughing because many times before I learned uh, to pay attention to this sort of thing, I would flail around for half an hour trying to figure out how to get the ribbon back on. So it's always a good idea to figure out exactly how it winds on for each machine and to follow that template as closely as you can. Olivetti's are famous for their ribbon caps. You have to take these off. There's one. And two. Now the ribbon spools come off. First, we'll get it out from here, like that, and we take this out. Here's the full side of the spool. Here's the empty side of the spool. Our eyelet is about five and a half inches away. You can see also that that is well, about a half inch. These old metal spools, very similar to the new plastic spools, have spears on them. Once you pull this off, there. You see that arrowhead right there? You impale the end of the ribbon right on top of that, and then you wind. So now one of the tedious parts is stripping off the old ribbon from the, the full spool. So let's do that right now. Sometimes you can make use of a tool. There, that just came right off. We're gonna open up our new ribbon here. There we go. Very good fresh ribbon. And you can see that these new plastic spools have the same... There! Plastic spools have that same little dart right there that catches into any uh, indentation or nub uh, right on here. If your ribbon doesn't come with a little a hole in it, you can just make it by just puncturing it with either the arrow or with like a pinprick. So here we've got the new spool, plastic, and the old bespoke Olivetti spool, which is metal. You can see that they've already left us pretty much five and a half inches right here. Now, our job is to get this ribbon impaled under that little dark right there. It's not so hard. You gotta kind of work it in with your fingers. Oh, shit. Just get it in there. What? There. There. It just popped on. You can see the arrow right there. Good. You can see we now have the proper distance for the eyelet. We've got the Olivetti spool here and the new plastic spool here. And now it really becomes a question of winding the spool. If I'm in my shop, I'll actually use a drill 
which makes things go a lot faster. Another trick, you can use the machine itself many times as a platform on which you can wind your new ribbon. Eyelet. And now we want to get rid of this one. Pop that right off that arrow lead and pop it back onto this one. There we go. Good. We want to get it around post and through right there. And then here's our eyelet that definitely has to be around the post. And the eyelet is what catches on this leader right here. So it's got to be on this side of it. I think we got it. And then as far as the paper guides are concerned, this machine is pretty simple. It just goes in there. Your hands are going to get inky. Put our sprocket caps back on. Give them a polish. So, test time. What have we learned? Ribbons are basically universal. They're all about a half inch wide. You can find them basically anywhere, online, at your office supply store. Easy peasy. Pay more attention to your machine's spools. You should figure out exactly what type of spool it has, and you should write that down someplace. If your machine comes to you with a set of metal spools on it, don't throw those out for any reason. First of all, they're probably bespoke to that machine. Second of all, like vintage manual typewriters themselves, they're just not making them anymore. If you're buying a machine online, always ask if it comes with the original set of spools or not. It's a good thing to know before you make a purchase. Very important, you can basically strip off any universal ribbon and load it onto any proprietary spool that you like. Last but not least, I recommend... <laughs> ah! Last but not least, I recommend that you get to know a very reputable typewriter repairman and or vendor. It's a great relationship for you to have. It will save you so much time. Their expertise is tremendously helpful. They're incredible resources, and there aren't that many of them left, so we should support them as much as we can. They can answer a lot of questions for you. They can make a lot of repairs that you might not be able to do yourself. And if you ever want to buy a new machine, they are the first people that you should go to. Again, I list uh, some resources for this in the comments down below. Speaking of which, if you like this video, please hit subscribe. To leave any questions or comments in the little spaces down below, unless it's spam, in which case, don't. Please. If you like written content about discovering, developing, or enhancing your creativity, please subscribe to my free blog at createx3.com. We always keep your information confidential. Never sell, trade, or vend, or do anything nefarious with your information. That just sucks. We don't do that. <laughs> Again, I'm Damon DeMarco for createx3.com. Thanks very much for your interest in typewriters and all things creative. Until next time, stay happy, stay healthy, and stay creative. Yeah. Are we done? We're done. I can take this off. Okay. I'm going to take this off.